modern life has become pretty stressful. And sometimes the stress never ends. There's one thing in life we can barely escape. Junk. Things that play an important role in our lives today might end up looking pretty old tomorrow. 20 million tons of metal waste are produced each year. Waste that contains the raw materials of tomorrow. Experts at shredder plants try to salvage a large part of these raw materials. At the Lübecker Schwatthandel Recycling Center, old washing machines and bikes are waiting to be processed, along with scrap metal from demolitions and old vehicles. In one day, 500 tons of junk from northern Germany and parts of Scandinavia are processed here. The junk contains a variety of metals. The challenge is to separate the metals from each other with as little waste as possible. It starts with the shredding process. Cars and other objects slide up a ramp and into the shredder. Here, a 3,000 horsepower rotor has 16 hammers attached to it, each one weighing 140 kilograms. Rotating 600 times a minute, the hammers grind up anything that gets in their way. The ground particles fall through a grill and onto a conveyor belt. At the same time, particles fly through another grill and out of the shredder. Most of the material ends up on the belt below. The single particles are now no larger than 15 by 15 centimeters. At the same time, particles weighing less than one kilogram are vacuumed up. That way, the so-called shredder light fraction is separated from the shredder heavy fraction. The heavy fraction makes up about three quarters of total output. It's transported by conveyor belts to a special hall. Ferrous metals containing iron remain attached to a rotating magnet. The iron waste is separated from the remaining material stream and stored temporarily in piles outside the hall. This is where 70% of the original waste ends up before it's transported to steel plants for further processing. But the remaining waste can be processed as well. After the magnetic separation of ferrous metals, non-ferrous metals such as aluminum, brass and copper are still found on the belts. The material also contains stainless steel and a variety of synthetic materials such as rubber. This mixture is treated further. The experts in Lübeck use a special eddy current separator. Several magnets are located inside a guide roller. The magnets produce an electric current in the non-ferrous metals and that produces a magnetic field around these particles. These magnetic fields are aligned differently than the magnetic fields in the guide rollers, causing them to repel the material. The particles without eddy current fall to the ground, while the magnetic repulsion carries the other particles into another bunker.
In this way, brass, copper, and aluminum are also extracted from the material stream. The only problem is that stainless steel is not captured by the roller magnets or the eddy current separator. Until now, this valuable raw material ended up as waste. But it's not the only wasted material. The shredder produces both heavy and light fraction. Shredder light fraction makes up about one quarter of the material processed in the shredder. And this light fraction was completely lost until now. The shredder light fraction still contains recycling materials like aluminum, stainless steel, copper and brass. These materials used to be lost in the waste stream. But with the new facility, we can now recycle these materials and feed them back into the economic cycle. To extract these valuable metals from the light fraction, Lubeck recycling experts use a brand new technology. A sensor is located under this belt. It recognizes material found on the belt. Precision valves blow compressed air onto the material. Depending on their size, the individual particles receive the blast of air they need to land in the recycling bunker. This technology was supported as part of the German government's environmental innovation program. Other companies interested in protecting the environment with innovative technology can also apply for funding through the program. The sensor is located underneath the belt and detects the individual particles. Transmitter and receiver are combined in 90 small coils measuring only 10 millimeters in diameter. The transmitters generate an electromagnetic field. The electromagnetic field is disturbed as soon as the metal particles pass the sensitive electromagnetic field area. Every particle creates its own specific signal with each type of metal creating unique information. And it's precisely this information which the coils send to a high performance computer for evaluation. The computer processes 450,000 spectral measurements per second in real time. Depending on the result, a control command is sent to a specific valve, which opens and closes within a thousandth of a second. The compressed air flows through the valves. An active compressed air regulation system ensures that the pressure and airflow is always at its best performance. The result is a very precise separation process requiring a minimal amount of compressed air and reduced electrical power consumption. We've had the facility for about two years, and after about a year and a half, it had already paid for itself. We now have a higher metal yield from the shredder light fraction, and we get stainless steel out of the waste. The unit is small and compact, and easily integrated into the existing facility. The first sorting of the light fraction using this new technology results in a mixture of stainless steel, other metals such as copper, brass and aluminum, and impurities picked up through the blowing process. But the material can be run through the facility again. During the second run, a high-performance computer ensures that only certain metal particles get blown away, like stainless steel, for example. The result is impressive. All the stainless steel particles that were built into an automobile or washing machine just a few minutes ago are now found together in a pure fraction of stainless steel. If this technology were used by all of the 50 or so shredders operating in Germany, some 20,000 tons of non-ferrous metal and stainless steel could be recycled each year. Around three fewer tankers would have to be unloaded in Hamburg Harbor each year, 
saving a lot of energy for their production and assembly. And that makes a lot of sense. Because more junk is surely on the way.